Betsy and Thomas here for the American Intelligence Media. Thomas, I cannot wait for you to tell the folks what's been on your mind today. So without further ado, have at it. Well, Betsy, it came to the Conclave's uh, agreement that something that we all take for granted is something that most people don't understand. One of the reasons they don't understand it is because it's a caricature has been made of it. For instance, the news. The news is a complete character, caricature, isn't it? It's completely fake. And it's based upon what? Trust. It's based upon whether you trust the people who are talking to you from the TV or from wherever you get your news. But at the same time, our entire Western world is based upon a, a certain assumption and a trust that most people don't realize, and that's this. As Alex Jones says in his caricature, we are in an information war. Well, this was known from the moment that the internet and the World Wide Web, which of course has its center at CERN in Switzerland, which is also the center of the CIA, don't forget that. But remember, the internet was first DARPAnet. It was created by the Research and Development Branch of the Department of Defense, DARPA, D-A-R-P-A. -A. Everyone should know DARPA. If you don't know DARPA, most of our modern inventions come from DARPA. But later, when it started to be cyber information, it was InQtel, which was the NSA and the CIA, and basically the transnationalists who all worked together through the group called Highland Forum. The Highland Forum determines where we go with cyber warfare right now, and it's a transnational group. It has nothing to do with America, but America owns the internet. We created the internet. It was called DARPANET. And when it was created, as soon as people heard about it, people who had a brain started to f create the philosophical concerns that this information could either set us free or bind us as slaves. The system of being able to let everyone have information for free over free lines without paying for it was the most radical thing that's ever happened in human consciousness. It basically made us look as if we are globally aware, globally conscious. We can, with the internet, by uh, the information that's been put on there by all of the decentralized constituents who are part of the internet, we can look omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. We can look up anything within a second and find out the information if we trust the sources, and that's what we're going to come back to in this conversation again and again, is yes, the information's there. Yes, it's available, but do you trust it? Can you trust it? Is it going to help you or is it going to harm you? This is what we say all the time. Discernment is the biggest issue in today's modern world. What is truth news? What is false news? What is fake news? What is yellow propaganda, uh, yellow journalism? What is propaganda? What is the truth about crypto coins? And that's where we're going with this in just a minute. We're going to try to frame this so that you can understand where you're at and you can use the internet for developing your higher consciousness instead of letting it manipulate you through your lower consciousness, through your desires. Now, we have been wanting to write an article on this, but the reason that we did not is because Eric Schmidt and Alphabet, the now now mother company, it was created after Google, but they call it the mother company. These are the lies that are perpetrated. Remember, Google, now Alphabet, owns Google, but Google owns a jillion things. They own, for instance, Google Deep Mind, the only artificial intelligence ever created in the face of the earth. All the rest that they tell you are lies. Those are subroutines. There's only one artificial intelligence and it's owned by Google. Google owns all of competition that's ever you know risen up except the fake competitions that they allow like Yahoo, Dogpile, you know, the other ones. But those are all still controlled by the internet and the base code that was written by DARPA and InQtel. InQtel is NSA and CIA's research and development branch. They stole the patents from leader technology to create what we now know as the searchable internet. These things weren't create, they were stolen by the US government from the patent office and then given out to stooges like the head of 
you know, the person who supposedly owns Facebook and created it, one of the most ignorant people on the face of the earth, Mark Zuckerberg, he is nothing more than a front man. Eric Schmidt and the two people that he replaced, the two, uh, uh, Page and Byrne, I think is the other guy's name, but the guys who supposedly founded Google, no, complete nonsense. They were given those technologies. They used a thing called Mimics that was created by Incutel and their they always change their name. Matter of fact, their newest name, I can't even remember, but they went from NQTEL to SAIC, and now I think it's uh, X, XTEL or something. Anyway, the point is, is they always change their name so you can't track them. But DARPA doesn't change its name because it uses all the companies that want to come and do innovation for them. They put forth an idea. The companies put their innovative project ideas forth. They choose the best company, and then Goldman Sachs comes in and funds them, and then a year after they're funded, they are evaluated with false valuations for billions of dollars. That's what happened with uh, Google. That's what happened with, um, with, with Yahoo, with Facebook, with YouTube, with all of them. Everything that you are now controlled by, iPhones, uh, the InQtel uh, developed uh, the microchips for Intel. So every single phone computer you have was all developed by the U.S. military. And they did it on purpose because they knew from the beginning, and I was involved in these things in the early days myself, when the first projects came online, when you could share information from one military facility to the other, this was incredibly radical. It freed up human consciousness. It made you think you were a god. I could sit in Alaska and I could put on the president's desk a cleared, and remember, this is what we're going to come back to. You have to clear the information. If the information isn't cleared, it could be used as a weapon. It could be false intelligence like weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, complete false intelligence. The Russian dossier against Trump, complete false intelligence. So we have to look at the fact that when this was begun, back in the early 70s, and I could put on the president's desk through the NSA a top secret message that I could 100% guarantee had not been intercepted by any of our enemies through a microwave transmission, you see. That's what we're talking about. That's the power that the president of the United States could gather information from anywhere in the world within seconds and have it on his desk, 100% verified. Now, what we don't understand in today's age is the philosophers at that moment said, this information must be free. It cannot be gated. It cannot be, you cannot charge for it. You cannot tax it. And if that happens, human consciousness is going to expand exponentially like no one could have ever imagined in human history. This is, this is in just the early stages of DARPANET before the World Wide Web was given to everyone and IP addresses could give anyone an opportunity to set up a node as part of this World Wide Web. And when they said web, it's because there's a spider creature who controls this web. And I'm explaining who the spider creature is to you. All of the base code involved in every single Google, every single uh, inquiry, everything you do on the internet has encryption codes in it that belong to the U.S. military. And they are controlled, as we pointed out before, by the Board of Broadcasting Governors. Everything broadcast in the whole world is controlled by them, and that's a Department of Defense control unit that now has a thing called the Global Engagement Center. And what they're doing is they are checking all information to see if it's true. As a matter of fact, a couple days ago, someone came out with a theory uh, that looks like it can be applied quite quickly for a blockchain ability to check news to see if it's true or false and even the degree of true or false that it is. So blockchain is nothing more than a system of clearance. It's a digital system of clearance that says within this system, when you use your credit card, you're basically using a clearance system. Every credit that happens in the world comes through information clearance. Just like every stock traded on the U on the New York Stock Exchange goes through the DTCC, the Depositor Trust Clearance Corporation. Every 
derivative swap in the world goes through a clearinghouse. Most of them are the internet, the intercontinental exchange clearinghouses in Europe and in America, but it doesn't matter. The big ones, if there's a problem, have to go through the bank for international settlement. It's a clearinghouse. Every single trade in the world that is part of international trade that is really well sanctioned goes through the World Trade Organization, which is a clearinghouse for the United Nations. Loans from America and all foreign aid goes through the World Bank, which is a credit clearinghouse. Every time you write a check, it goes through the basement. We call, we make a joke. We call it the basement of the Treasury because at first, every check written in America had to be cleared by the Treasury. Now there's five or six different massive companies that do this as well as the Treasury. But the point is, think of it. Every time you write a check, you're not transferring money. You're transferring digits. And where are those digits transferred through? The Internet. Yes, the Internet was created as a weapon to draw in our enemies. It wasn't supposed to draw in all of the Americans who then put all their businesses on it. Well, I think that's not quite right. I, I think it was a weapon to draw all of us in so they can just shut us up when they're ready. Initially, no, because initially it was a weapon that was controlled by the military. DARPA was set up between universities that had U.S. Department of Defense contracts. And that's where all of the technology that we use today comes from, those universities. All, just look, check, check out what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. Any of them, from microchips to uh, Bill Gates' uh, 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 computer programs to uh, Apple Macintosh to the Internet to Facebook to YouTube to Amazon, it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. It's all the same base code. But it wasn't supposed to be used for industry. It was supposed to be used for military, for military secrets, Everyone on the DARP, everyone on DARPA to begin with had a top secret security clearance because the information that was sent over it had to do with military research. DARPA. We didn't give out that research to the world in the early days as we do now. So your concern, Betsy, is, is most pointed and poignant because we have to ask the question, when did Freedom of information, which was being used to help bolster the American defense of itself, turn into what I'm about to describe, which is the fact that you are like a hobbit that has been caught by Shelob the spider, and you're just been you've been wrapped around in a cocoon of the internet silk, and you're waiting to have your juices drained from you. That is what the internet is, and the people who are going to drain it from you are the people who run Alphabet. Alphabet is creating and has been creating since the day you Googled the first time a profile for you. They even know where you're going. They know where you're at and they know where you're going to go next. And that's the reason on your phone, you sometimes get messages of how far it is to go to your next location because you're following your schedule. Your phone is tracking you and it knows what you're doing and it tells you how to get to your... It wants to be helpful. It wants to draw you in. It wants to give you only the news that you want and then even refine that so that it is telling you what to believe. It is telling you where to go. It's telling you what to buy and you never have to leave your house because... Jeff Bezos and drones are going to deliver to you your consumer products because that's all they need you for is to be a consumer on the internet at this point because guess what, folks? There's no money backing any of the digital currencies. So what I'm about to tell you is shocking, but it's the truth. How do you think 65% of our wealth goes into offshore accounts, into tax havens? It goes there digitally. How do you think the old boys club of the casino of the stock exchange and the commodity markets and the derivative markets, they all operate tax free and they all operate through one computer that clears them. One computer controls that. In other words, if you want to fake any information, it's very, very easy to do. And by the way, there's no money ever being transferred in any of that. What is that computer, Thomas? That's the computer for the DTCC, which now... Uh, that, that, which is controlled by the, uh, but there's multiple clearinghouses. So there are 
there's probably only, there's probably less than 20 clearing houses in the world for all stocks, all commodities, all uh, paper, gold and silver exchange, um, all derivative swaps, um, the movement for clearances for the Bank for International Settlement. All of that is all digital. It's digital. There's no currency involved. And those currency systems are outside of that. And so about the only thing that has anything behind it is those people who are betting on currencies that are backed by precious metals. And there's very few of them now. You know, sometimes people might have an imagination that having an offshore account means that money is physically located on some remote island, right, offshore. But what we would need to see is that it's not necessarily that, it's digital. It's in the ether, so to speak. And I know you're going to talk about that with cryptos. Yes. And th there are some, and very, very few, and mostly in British Isles in the Commonwealth. of. But wouldn't that be a computer that is located on that particular land in almost all cases you're right betsy there's oh, i was going to point out there's a few that have vaults and they're okay. pretty near britain uh they're very they're actually islands offshore of britain and some of them are super secret that they have deep deep vaults where they keep art where they keep very valuable jewels where they keep uh stores of gold but most of the gold is of course we know in zurich and in the, in the zurich gold vault the other gold is all used for writing fake paper gold and we've talked about that quite a bit. But when we're talking about offshore accounts, you're right. Uh, George Soros owes us $17 billion because that's the taxes that he's stolen from us by running his largest hedge fund, quantum hedge fund, it, from an offshore account. I, I mean, this is allowed, but there's also offshore accounts in Delaware and Montana and Utah, in Nevada um, and in other places in America where our government allows people to have tax shelters. The rich are allowed to have their tax shelters because that's where the politicians have their hidden funds that pay them off. And that's what, why they become career politicians. Why is it that uh, uh, Maxine Waters lives in a $5 million house? Why is it that she has, you know, tens of millions of dollars in the bank? Why is it? How did she get that being a public servant? And that's just the money that she's not ashamed to uh, uh, let the government know is in accounts in America that is her legal money. Every politician that's in their third or fourth term has an offshore account. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. But the point is, is it's all digital. So for instance, there's a derivative swap done for $5 billion to short gold. This happened recently uh, within the last six months. It was made on a Friday, late on a Friday, and no one could clear it. So it went to the Bank for International Settlement. And what happened? Could they clear a $5 billion fake short on gold because they know that they shorted gold, the bank shorted gold by moving gold and by fake reports on gold. This happens all the time. They have paid tens of billions of dollars in fines for, for fixing gold, silver, and LIBOR rates, okay? So when they move this money around in a derivative, there's no money moved. They make a $5 billion bet that gold's going to drop on a, by a certain date. It happens. And the bank that, or the whoever they did the swap with, usually another bank, has to pay them. Oh, but that bank, uh, minutes before, had done a silver derivative swap for $5 billion that, that silver would drop in October because silver always drops in October. So all the banks can get their digital money by simply knowing how to short silver in October. Well, these systems are all digital. There's no... There's no precious metals behind it. There's no collateral behind it. For instance, MERS is a digital trust system. The, the uh, mortgage electronic registration system. You don't have a mortgage. No mortgage exists for most of the houses that went through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac because they have been digitized into one centralized computer and they really don't have a mortgage. They produce a mortgage when one of their member banks or trust companies, or insurance companies, or mortgage companies tells them to produce it. Well, no, and it doesn't look like the warranty deeds that you used to get in the old days with a stamp from the county. The counties in America lost $4.5 billion when they centralized all, all the computers into MERS, M-E-R-S, if you want to look it up. We've written about it. But now, oh, that's right. The New York, the ICE, the person, the group that owns the New York Stock Exchange bought MERS. 
Therefore, and we've gone into this with great fervor before, every stock, every stock in the stock exchange, including your 401k, is actually owned by ICE through a company that is part of the New York Stock Exchange, Seed & Company. So when they're exchanging your stock, it's tax-free. And if it goes bankrupt, if the New York Stock Exchange goes bankrupt, Seed & Company is an unbankruptable company that the Congress cre demanded be created so that the owner of the New York Stock Exchange gets to keep all the stock if the stock market goes bankrupt. And ICE, uh, the Intercontinental Exchange uh, Corporation, said that they intended to sell the New York Stock Exchange in 2017. So all the indicators are showing that the digital confidence is fake. There's no, you can't have confidence in the New York Stock Exchange digits that tell us the volume of exchange. We now know that the Fed has uh, has bought trillions of dollars worth of that and now wants to clear their books of those purchases. So what we're seeing is currency is digital, stocks, even US stocks are digital, and we see that they get bought up mysteriously the second that they get sold. We see that everything is digital, and that's the reason 65% of the wealth can go to offshore accounts. So this is what we wanted to bring to you, is this idea right now. Bitcoin, all cryptocurrencies, are simply credit systems. They simply say that when you buy into them, you believe that whatever you bought it at, that it's hopefully going to be that much or more later, and that it's a tax-free system, and that's what drew you into it, because you don't have to pay taxes on it. No, if you cash out and you have gains, you have to report that. That's very sketchy, Betsy, at this point. And the exchanges have now been targeted by the U.S. Treasury, but they have yet to be attacked. They're still drawing people in, drawing people in, drawing people in. Yes, they are. And uh, so I think smart people, and you are an economist with a degree in it, and so uh, you would know better than any of us uh, about this. But what we're trying to get across is the concept that it's a nothing but a credit. It's nothing but a system where you... It's a belief. Oh, yes. Well, it is. It's, it's a belief a, system. And actually, it becomes trust in one another in a virtual world that I'm going to trust that other people also trust the system. And is that really any different than what the U.S. dollar, petrodollar is supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be trusting one another? Oh, wait a minute. What we're really supposed to be trusting is the central banks, but I have no trust in the central bank, so I stopped using the currency to go to some place that I do trust, which are the cryptocurrencies. Yes, and you're exactly right. And cryptocurrencies um, are somewhat like when you buy paper, gold, or silver. You have faith that that piece of paper could get you bullion if you ask for it. But when you ask for it, just as you pointed out with cryptocurrency, if they can, if you do it in America, they may try to charge you taxes for it. If you want to be legal, you should claim it. But we know that there are cryptocurrency systems that certainly go around the government. And that was one of the intents of creating cryptocurrencies. But the point is, is who is it that controls all cryptocurrencies? And we see all these initial coin offerings happening so fast. Uh, you could tell us, Betsy, how many of these currencies oh, thousands, are there now? Thousands. Thousands? Yeah. And you have to think about it like a paper currency, just to help folks frame this. You know, I can go and I can get a pound or a lira or a dollar. These are all different currencies. They're physical currencies that are attached to countries. But what you have in crypto world is that you have all these different currencies, but they're attached to uh, like levels of consciousness. No, that's not quite the word, but a group of people that want to believe and trust in that particular crypto and that becomes that virtual country for that crypto precisely it's almost its own nation isn't it yes but it's in the virtual world mm -hmm. so i might i might have more faith in bitcoin than i do uh maybe a new one like rivet that's come out and um, so it's it's about the level of trust that you have with one of those cryptos now people have some trust in bitcoin but when Jamie Dimon the other day yeah, demonstrated crashed. that his remarks could cause it to drop. That was so he could buy it 
through Chase through J.P. Morgan Chase in Europe at a deflated yeah. rate because he attacked it. Yes, that was a that that is what it was an economic terrorist attack, and the reason that they're getting into this is because they're being sucked in. Who created Bitcoin? It is a mystery. It is alleged that a certain person created it. And once people really started buying into it, then it started to have a life of its own. And now we just heard from Betsy. There's thousands of these, but we also just heard from Betsy the key word. Virtual. Without the internet, it doesn't exist even if you have paper copies in your own wallet. Well, one of the things that we've seen in writing all these citizen intelligence reports, Thomas, is that DARPA, the government the military industrial complex will go and they will establish and create some technology, right? They're not going to come out and say they created it because we would all run from it. So what they do is they create a legend and an image. You know, it's usually some guys in a dorm room that put it together or a couple of geeks over here that put it together or a mysterious Japanese sounding name who put it together. And I don't trust any of it. There's no freaking way that Mark Zuckerberg at Harvard put together that system of Facebook. I don't believe it. No, he didn't. He put together a system of raiding girls' bodies. That's right. But but when, after the uh, military-industrial complex, or whoever you want to specifically name, created that social network, it made it approachable to the average person that some geek at Harvard did it. But you look at Mark Speak, and you know that, that the intelligence to create the system isn't behind the being that's standing there called Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, that's for sure. And it wasn't just a weapon to listen to us. It was a weapon to manipulate us in real time. So when you make a choice, every time you choose like on Facebook, that determines what then appears for you. And it's all controlled. And now he admits it's controlled. And he is nothing more than a puppet. That's the reason that the last ditch effort they had, I love this. And we, we kept saying, how many more Comey Surprises are they're going to come uh, through Robert Mueller. And it's, oh, that's right. Mark Zuckerberg was looking through his books of billions of dollars of ads. And he found, you know, these Russian controlled ads. Lie, lie, so lie. so what? Russia can buy ads? Precisely. I mean, really. Hillary Clinton spent billions of dollars. Any country, this, why in the world would they think that the average citizen out here wouldn't know that it's perfectly legal for a country to buy ads and try to influence an election? $100,000 worth of ads on Facebook. I've never clicked on an ad in Facebook or the internet in my life, and I never will. But... I don't, and I also don't think others do. I think that's all lies. I think the Zuckerberg uh, value of his stupid Facebook and also for uh, YouTube and for Google, it's all lies. It's just so that they can have the power and slush fund to buy all the companies that are their competition. Well, it's a, a distraction, much like the NFL is a distraction. It's all bread and circus. It's all of these things are out there to keep us distracted from what is really important, and that is the development of higher consciousness. Eventually, Alphabet plans that every time you Google, you will be charged. Because they're going to set you up with a little atmosphere, your own little box. They're going to put you in a box, and they're going to provide you with uh, what they call AI choices. There's no AI, folks. There's only one AI in the whole world. There are not those that is brainwashing manipulation controlled determined by immediate responses to your choices on your Google uh, uh, inquiries as well as everything you choose and prefer, like, or in any way respond to on Facebook or any other social network. They're all controlling you. If they're offering you images, now if you're uh, just looking at words on a page, it's a little bit different, but the images they're offering you are all filled with subliminal information. So all those ads you see over there on the sides flashing, they're advertising much more than just the sex that is flashing the, you know, the sex that's flashing at you to try to get you to click on it. And when you enter those systems, it is analyzing you and it is setting you up for a box so that you have no freedom. You'll have to pay a large amount of money to get any free information in the future. Mark my words. Others may not agree with this from the conclave, but I can guarantee you this is what's going to happen because I have heard Eric Schmidt describing it in uh, in very subtle ways and through what he's implying, uh, as well as his bragging about what they've developed. It's very clear where they're going. 
can we go back to cryptocurrencies? Can you continue that conversation? The reason all governments are getting into cryptocurrencies is because they've all been suckered in, just like all nations have been suckered into having a central bank. If you don't have, and if you have a national central bank, you are treated like dirt. Then you're not part of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, which is part of the United Nations. It controls everything in terms of currencies. Uh, what we call the free market, there's no free market. It is controlled mostly by the International Monetary Fund. Recent, and that is controlled by Washington, and it is controlled through the UN. That's how they control the other nations. Even China and Russia got into the IMF under the auspices that they thought that if they brought, brought in a gold-backed currency, that they would be given, uh, they'd be called a reserve currency. And, and therefore, that helps them supposedly sneak up on the world to develop their own yuan oil-based currency or uh, ruble-based currency. Or No, Russia and China will not be the currencies of the world. They hold China holds 1.96% of currency exchanges. That's 2%. All of, they were fools. They were tricked by the Clintons. Everything's done in dollars. Even Russia did all their oil deals in dollars. Okay? So they can't just drop it. They don't, they're not going to have the confidence and the faith to have a currency based upon their lies about their gold reserves. Nobody's going to believe China or Russia that they have these gold reserves that they now are fictitiously saying they have. Are they going to believe what China recently said? No ICOs, not only Bitcoin, no crypto coins, no cryptocurrency in China. Okay. And then what happened? A few weeks later, we're starting our own cryptocurrency. Oh, well, I think they says. just stopped it temporarily yes. so they could get control over it, get a handle on it, before and start they, their own. It, right before they roll it out. Okay, but their own is not going to be trusted. Who would trust? Well, trust is about what an individual feels about something. Would you buy into a gold mine from China? No, of course not. Why not? It's a commodity. Right. It's listed right. on the Chinese okay. Commodity Exchange or the Hong Kong or Shanghai. Why wouldn't you? They just said they got 7,000 tons of gold through the Shanghai Exchange and they're calling it the Yamashita gold oh, yeah. <laughs> purchases. Right. Okay. Why don't you trust that? Because we stole their gold. General Yamashita, we stole it from him. And the CIA owns it. So for them to say they just got... That's like Russia recently saying, okay, get ready. We just got through admitting in all of our plans about going to Mars that we lost the papers that show us how to go to the moon. But we're going to the moon with Russia now. We're yeah. going to establish a... An, an international moon station. That was in the news yesterday, well, Betsy. Why I don't you have trust in that? Why don't you purchase? Why don't you buy into that? Why don't you buy some stock in the Russian-American space station around the moon? Yeah, why don't you have faith, because Betsy? Because there are still some people out there that believe we went to the moon, honey. <laughs> but the point is, Russia, America... With all the Russia collusion, there are enemy sanctions on Russia, but, stepping up NATO, stepping up everything. Well, it's probably because it just twists your mind. Let me tell you what happened. All right, Betsy, are you ready for this one? Yep. Top secret information. Oh, but many years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what year this would be. This would be... Uh, don't, uh, give, don't give away your age. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, we have viewers out there okay. that think you're a young, you know, swinging hunk. <laughs> oh, like Tom Fenton? Yeah, oh, your, yeah. Your oh, new yeah. boyfriend? Oh, what? yeah. We girls think, out here, we're I, liking Tom. I think you'll... He, I, oh, I would vote for him and Larry Clayman as a as president no, and vice no, president. No, no, no. Larry Clayman, he's a little stale. I mean, he's got great information. But that Tom Fitton, oh, I'm telling you, he's intelligent. We girls like that. He's got that silver fox look and those great biceps. I'm saying Fitton for 2020. With Clay... With Clayman yeah. as vice president? Uh, no, 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 Come on. No, 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 no. Trump on the Give top. Give me that. Trump on the top. And okay, Clayman. Fitting as the vice president and getting him ready for the presidential run. Okay, I'll go with that. Okay. As long as you make Larry Clayman, uh, he gets Jeff Sessions' job. Okay, okay. Fair deal. Because he just came out and is, uh, took a, a case to court of two people who died in the Benghazi uh debacle and taking Clinton to court. So but the point is, is trust, trust, trust. It's all about trust. We gave Russia our space program completely. They were so far behind us. I've, I've explained this before in some videos, so it's not really much of a top secret. But 
Uh, when we had 600,000 channel systems, they had 16 channel systems. <laughs> I used to break out their systems. They were so easy. It was easy as pie. And they, But now, no, they're more advanced than us because why? Obama and Clinton gave them their version of Silicon Valley right outside of Moscow. Okay, let's get back on track, honey. Okay, so crypto coins. Crypto coins, this is the sad, sad news. And now we have confirmation of this from some of the best sources. And I said this from the beginning, by the way. I was a little bit off. I said all crypto coins are CIA. It's probably NSA. Because it takes... Remember, the CIA and NSA are in a battle with each other. That's why the whistleblowers came out who had so much information. No one has access to all that information except William Binney, who created it. He's real. Uh, all the others, they're exaggerating a bit, but especially the big ones that we know... Because of a war between the CIA and the NSA. The NSA found out that CERN was the headquarters of the rogue CIA. And we've talked about this a lot before too. The rogue CIA is, is economic. They're economic terrorists. That's why they work with the Bank for International Settlements. That's why the Bank for International Settlements, to finish the story, with the $5 billion short on gold, they manipulated gold. How do they manipulate gold? Who has gold? Who sold gold? The CIA has all the gold. They have more gold than all the reserves in America, Britain, Russia, and China, even with China's new fake gold. But they can't get it out in the market or it becomes evident that they have it. All world currencies would crash. Right. So they're having to launder it in they're some They're waiting way. for the reevaluation. Oh. When the revaluation comes... Companies like Blackstone will be, as you pointed out, as big as nations, and they will be unstoppable. Citibank, J.P. Morgan, uh, Deutsche Bank, the CI, these obvious uh, CIA banks, HSBC, uh, UBS, uh, New York Bank, uh, uh, the Central Bank of New York, uh, New York Bank, Bankers Trust. All these are major CIA banks. You can trace the money where it came from. This is magic money that just appeared overnight, billions of dollars, again and again and again. How does this happen? Well, How got, do they move hundreds of millions of dollars? It becomes so overwhelming. So I hope that you're going to start pointing us in a direction of how we can get this in our own head and what we can do to um, protect ourselves or defeat this. Oh, well, that's easy. You simply go back to the original philosophers. Information is freedom. So right now, we have used the internet, we being the masses of the public that they thought were idiots, we've used it against them, you see. We've used it to do blockchaining of their fake news. Yeah, and let me take a moment and describe what I mean by that. It doesn't mean that there's some magical computer system behind this. But if you see the blockchain in your imagination as something that is existing beyond your physical form, it's out in the ethers, it's in consciousness. What happens is that one news channel that's been out there for a while might put a story out. Other truth news channels are checking to see if they're factual. If it is, they may repost that on their sites. And all of this is working just magically, because much like Adam Smith's invisible hand. But then you might have a place that you go where it's not truth news. It is fake news. You can see that the sources are anonymous, etc. So then we begin to dismiss that site and we don't link to it anymore. So then what happens is that all of the sites that are linking to truth begin to lift like a mothership. That's the way I see it is a truth mothership. And what your job is as a reader or a viewer is to find those links that bring you into that truth ship so that you can see more and more truth revealed. Does that make sense? Absolutely, Betsy. That's a, you've described the citizen journalist blockchain of truth. Yes. But We're all checking each other. That's the human one. They will soon have computer ones. Yes, I do know that. But I can guarantee you that it won't be truth. Whoever's behind it is going to push their narrative. Well, it's like a Media Matters. It's like, what's that group called? Snoop, Snoop, Snoops, whatever Snoops. it's called. Snoops. 
Yeah. Uh, those are fake. Thing. Yes. Uh, that, that was like Hillary well, like, Clinton's site like she Axios. set up for fact checking. Axios is Axios really fake. Axios is, a, is a, Oh, my gosh. And they, it's the new CNN, Washington yeah. Post, New York Times combined. Yeah, but because they realized people were getting their news on the internet, so they had to go quickly create these new internet news sites. So you have to be very careful about those two. You see, it used to be that the bankers and the brokers had it all down when they only had Reuters. And then when America started the AP, the Associated Press, it was owned by Reuters. And the UPI was owned by uh, Sun Myung Moon at, at one point, but it also was owned by basically globalists. So Reuters, Thompson, Thompson Reuters now, uh, UPI, which is diminished completely, and AP, the Associated Press, is a group of news agencies in America that all trust each other. So anything coming across the AP, even if there's no name at the bottom, even if there's no no byline for the photo, even if the video doesn't tell you where it comes from, the idiot truth, the idiot mainstream media picks megaphones, it up as though it's truth. They just say it out loud, no matter what. They don't check anything. They've done no investigative journalism since. Uh, these idiot investigated journalist anchor men got caught telling all their lies about how they were in battle and they had bullets shooting at them. Lies, lies. It's entertainment, folks. You need to go to the blockchain of truth. What is the blockchain of truth? It's inside yourself. It's called discernment. It's the ability to do what we do through our conclave. We don't need anybody in the inside. We use logic. It's simply the matter of reason. Axios, check any Axios article, get to the bottom of the article. They'll say the opposite of what they said at the top. They'll say the opposite of the or, headlines. Or typically and they don't have a source. No sources whatsoever now. They quote non-sources, quoting non-sources, quoting non-sources, because right. everyone knows it's fake. So, the, so they now have found out that the weapon of the internet through media and through broadcasting, because it was broadcasting for a long time before media, before the internet came along, so everyone believed their television. They believed their radio. They believed what they were told. Then they were supposed to believe the internet. Wrong. That's where they got really confused because the internet started to be used against them. That you can't use television against them. You can't. Uh, the hundred thousand dollars for the fake Russian ads in Facebook. Thirty million dollars was spent in the last week for bad ads by Hillary. Thirty million dollars in just the last week. No, no, no. Billions of dollars Hillary spent. Billions of dollars the DNC spent to propagandize. All right, Thomas, let's get back it's to the subject. It's all digital. Okay, go for all it. All cryptocurrencies, all the internet, it's all digital. You said it. It's virtual. It doesn't exist except in the trust that you give it. Now, I buy crypto Bitcoin today. And oh, let's say I bought it a month ago when it was a thousand, and today it's over four thousand. I sell it, I get out. As long as that exchange doesn't turn me into the IRS, I'm okay. It's the best returns you can possibly get. How could they allow this type of Ponzi scheme to be going? There's no money. No one can explain to me yet, and I'm not an economist. I don't know. No one can explain to me where the money comes from except the trust that people pay higher amounts each time. It's all, the, all, all fiat currency in the whole history of the world has been based on trust. Exactly. Okay. And so when it comes down to it, even when you have the miners of cryptocurrencies uh, mining to make sure that the blockchain is tight and that, as a matter of fact, they're going to blockchain with everything. They're going to go to blockchain with your taxes, with your mortgages, with your assets. Everything's going to blockchain because it's a system of trust. It's a system. It's a clearinghouse. Each blockchain is a clearinghouse. And that's what all currencies, that's what all markets, that's what all commodities are based on, clearinghouses. Remember, Gold, silver is all, uh, most of that is futures, all oils, futures. These are futures. All commodities are futures. They don't even exist. When you buy into them with faith and trust and credit, they don't exist. Now, the crucial factor here is in America, we reversed the entire economic system of history because we turned credit into assets. We don't let them have our gold. We don't back up our fiat currency with gold. We don't back it up with a darn thing except credit. We say we're good for it. 
So now we have 20 trillion. That's nonsense. We know 4.5 trillion off book accounts, just one transaction from the Fed that they got caught in. So they admitted it. So we know that there's got to be at least, at least a hundred trillion dollars probably in debt right now being driven by the U.S. currency because we don't even know the volume of currency. There's only estimates. So when the whole currency is looked at, there's nothing backing it up except debt. But but Steve Mnuchin t- text tweeted all of us that all the gold is there <laughs> at Fort Knox. Yes. Uh, well, I think... Um, and did that make you made, trust the I, system anymore? I think we made fun of him pointing out yeah. that that didn't develop any trust in anybody, even the Fed shows, uh, lets the cameras in to show their cages at the New York uh, Central Bank that where they move the gold around supposedly for currency exchange, which they don't need to and which is a lie. And, uh, you know, it's from that bank that the gold gets shipped across uh, all throughout the world. We've heard recently of huge shipments of gold going to Europe and back and forth because somehow we're supposed to believe that gold bullion was shipped to America to be held by the Fed. Uh, 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 why? Why was this? We control the currencies of the world. Any gold is not going to be coming to us for currency exchanges. So this is complete nonsense. So it's all digitals, Betsy. That's what I'm trying to get to. This is where I always get upset because I was a computer guy. I helped worked on some, the, the earliest computers you can imagine you don't even know existed, I worked on. I created some of the initial systems, okay, to get them out of using plugs going into holes to using digits and just impulses. The stock exchange, the New York Stock Exchange is on one computer. All of America, 86 to 96% of personal mortgages are on one computer. One computer, Betsy. All the derivatives are on just less than 20 computers, Betsy. The it, it, When it comes down to it, Here's the reality. And you've said this. You said well, it first. The reality is we are on a prison planet. And I want to know how we break out, Thomas. Well, you said it first. The internet is owned because the wires are all controlled by the U.S. federal government all the way into Russia, all the way into China. Those are our lines. And by the way, we in the future, there's wireless coming from space because that's what the U.S. military uses now. It's called Spectrum. But the point is, is that right now we own the whole internet and if we wanted to close it down, we could. So if we wanted to say, oh, China's messing with us. You can't do that because yes, it would can. also shut down commerce. And That's the point. Whole whole economic system would shut down. So who is it that controls the Fed that controls those lines? Those all go through NSA controlled lines. The NSA controls we got to every... get rid of these intelligence agencies. There are 10 collection uh, units in America. They're well-known. Uh, what's the one in New York called? Uh, Titan Place, I think it's called. But the point is there's 10 of them. Every single one of those wires for the internet, the optical cable wire, every cable, all, every, into every country comes through us. It is controlled by the NSA, and the NSA doesn't really do anything. They're controlled by the CIA, which at first was connected to the FBI, but now it's connected to the Center for Counterterrorism, which is controlled by a bunch of public corporate intelligence agencies and ex-military and intelligence people who go out to make huge amounts of money working for them. And that's who's controlling the world. America is just a piece. Until Trump came to power, America was being completely lost, completely sold over to who? Who who visited Obama more than anybody else? Who do you think Obama spent? 80% of his time with when he was the president in official capacity, who do you think he spent it with? Eric Schmidt. Correct. Silicon Valley people who gave him $2 billion in cash for his fake library and still continues. They grease in the wheels. And they continue to give illegally. And this has been in the news recently that the Michelle, Michelle's Obama Foundation has been merged with the library, has been merged with OFA, has been merged with another company. They're doing the Hillary Clinton pay-to-play thing in the end, aren't they? Absolutely, but much, much worse. They they are resistance leaders. They are fighting against this. And he knows that when he was president, he actually set up an executive order that said that if there was a cyber attack, he could take over everything in America, including your bank account, including your food stores and your guns in your house. That's what Obama did. He set up for executive control to be absolute martial law 
thoroughly, 100%. If he wants to at any moment, he can tell the NSA, turn off the internet except in America. Okay, Thomas. Or just let the impulses come into America. Don't let them go out or let them go out, but don't let them come in. He could turn off all hedge fund illegal accounts that are in offshore accounts. He could turn off all the digits in offshore accounts with one push of a button because they're all illegal. Well, this seems highly unconstitutional, but you're saying that Trump also has that power. But Thomas... Oh, wrap it up. You want me to say something positive? Yeah, I want you to. I want you to I kind want, of get I, I, this I, in a container, and I, then I, I want to hear what we out here have to do to combat this. The minute, minute you look the devil in the face, you take away his power. The minute you call the devil by his name, you take away the power. That's true. We have to look at evil. We have to look it in the face. We have to stop being ostriches, sticking our heads in the sand. We have to get out of the box that Google has put us in, that the internet has put us in. We have to get out of pers- control of centralized global control with computers we have to go to regional community based banks systems food systems you cannot count on anything outside of your own region we need to totally move to decentralization of anything and everything if you don't know about permaculture you need to look into it when we boycotted cuba the next day castro said everyone will have a garden in their backyard admittedly they have good sun all year round but the point is they lasted all this time because people grew gardens in their backyard or you go to the local local farmer's market that's another way because you might not live in a place where you can do permaculture you can't eat digits you can't eat crypto coins you can't eat even gold and silver it is food it is seeds it is and it is soil that is the most powerful things in the face of the earth now going back to look at the evil with the internet darpa net don't even call it internet that is darpa net and when you look at Google, they're trying to Google your brain. Don't use it unless you have consciousness. Don't use Facebook unless you don't like anything. Create your own profile that makes you look like a Missouri Ozark hillbilly. Make yourself look like an imbecile by your choices. Go on and manipulate them. Use the internet as a weapon against them. That's what we're doing. That's why we're broadcasting today. That's why we do what we're doing. I don't care if the internet goes out tomorrow. I still know how to add. I don't need a computer. I don't need an adding machine. I can grow things. And not only that, if you look at the work that we have done with Anonymous Patriots, if you look at the other work that we have done through the glass speed game and all the connections, if you look at all that work, we took full advantage of the internet, didn't we? We used the internet against its own spider nature, its own vicious, violent, aggressive, controlling, domineering nature. And we used it for good because why right now, folks, all of the spiritual teachings are available online, almost all of them. There's hardly anything still hidden. I I search this all the time and every day more comes out. All of the revelations of science are coming out, but they cannot synthesize them and create a new system where there's new icons and a new philosophy that puts the human first and, and gets rid of robots and cyborgs and DNA experimentation. All that is insanity. That is driven by the internet. If you turned off the internet, all of that would end and people would become local and and they would learn how to draw water from the air. They would learn how to grow seeds that could produce more than ever before, we would focus on the things that matter. So use the internet for consciousness. It is the greatest tool that actually makes you look for a moment as if you are omniscient, that you know everything, that you're uh, omnipresent, that you can go anywhere because you can go onto the internet and look at anywhere. You can go to the Gobi Desert and get a picture of someone has been there. They took a picture. You can go there with Flickr. You can get it. Or you can look omnipotent. You can sit at home and you can buy crypto coins when they cost nothing and then sell them when, like John McAfee says, Bitcoin's going to go to 500000 a coin. He's probably right. Who knows more about the internet than him? So, folks, remember, these are devices of the devil, but it doesn't mean you can't get the devil to dance for you.